Hey everyone, my name's Steve, and today I'm gonna to show you how to create a frame on Farcaster. Now, if you're not sure what those two things are, let me lay it out real quick. Farcaster is a decentralized social media network. If you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend doing that at farcaster.xyz or go ahead and signing up at warpcast.com. Now, frames are a new way to interact with content in a social media feed. It was implemented by the Farcaster team, and essentially it takes advantage of the open graph standard. You know, when you usually post like a link to a blog or a website, it's going to show like a little preview wherever you post it. Could be Twitter, could be your iMessages or whatever. And that preview is basically metadata tags in the HTML that describe the name of the website, the title, description, and maybe an image. So Farcaster was basically like, what if we took this standard and implemented our own little logic in here and implement buttons? and post URLs and actually make these frames interactive. And that's exactly what they are. So here's an example frame that myself, Justin and Marge from the Pinata team built. And it's basically like an emoji chat. You just click start emoji chatting and very much like T9 when you had to press all those buttons on a flip phone. It's like this, but you basically press emoji. So I can basically click this. It's going to put an emoji in the chat. Did a football. Let's do another one. Football and wine, that sounds cool. And then just send it. And it's gonna show us like a cool little ad that we're able to put in there and then click see messages. And what's really unique about this is that it's implementing a lot of the information that is available on the Farcaster network, such as my username and my profile picture, just basically my identity. This is like an open data system for social media and makes this whole concept really powerful. And so today I'm going to show you how to build this one. It's really simple and it's just going to be a series of images. The purpose is just to show you the basic structure of a frame, how they work exactly and how to get started. And from there you can do way more creative things with them. So for instance, uh, this is just our little open graph image. You can paste in your URL, hit begin. And it's basically going to do kind of like a comic book style flip through of some pages. Very cool. And then it's going to have a little outgoing link so we can click on visit cosmiccowboys.cloud and it's going to take us to that website. Pretty sweet. Now, in order to get started in this tutorial, you're going to need a few things. Uh, you're going to need, probably need a little bit of dev experience with front end like Next.js apps. That's probably the easiest way to do this, but there are other ways to go about it. You're probably going to need, you know, your standard code editor, at least node version 18 installed on your machine. It also helps to have any kind of client to test API calls. So that could be Postman or my personal favorite HTTP. Another thing that you'll find helpful in this tutorial is a pinata account. All those images you just saw and all that media, it's a great use of Pinata and IPFS. And so once you sign into your Pinata account, all you really have to do is just click on the upload button. I'm going to click upload folder. I'm going to upload this folder with all my images. There we go. And once it's uploaded, I'll have the CID, which I'll copy later. And the other thing I'm going to need is my gateway. I can click on this gateways page here. I'm going to have this gateways domain. Go ahead and copy and save that. We're going to use that later in the tutorial. All right, so we've got all of our tools set up. Now it's actually time to start building this project. So to do that, go ahead and go to your terminal and we're going to run MPX create next app at latest and we'll call this frame tutorial. Really call it whatever you want. And we're going to basically select all the defaults here. We're going to use TypeScript, Tailwind, App Router, all that stuff. It's going to go ahead and install all of our dependencies. Now we're going to go ahead and go into Frame Tutorial. Make sure we spell it right. There we go. And we're also going to install a couple things. So we're going to just do npm install just to install all the dependencies. The other thing we're going to install is Coinbase's on-chain kit, which is a great little library for handling Farcaster frames. Let's just do npm install Coinbase on chain kit. All right, so everything's ready. Now we can go ahead and open this with our code editor of choice. That could be VS code or whatever you want to use. So we're in the project and you go ahead and see the structure of this. We go ahead and have a app folder with a layout and a page TSX. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and actually a .env.local file. And in here, we're going to put in a couple of variables. First one is going to be our next public gateway URL. This is going to be the domain of that gateway that you saw earlier. So it's going to be HTTPS followed by the domain. So in my case, it's Plum Peculiar Fox 986. Then we want to do the next public base URL. This is going to be your actual Vercel domain when you publish the website. For now, we can just use localhost. So HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000. There we go. Now we want to go ahead and go to the page.tsx file and just go ahead and wipe everything out of the file. And instead, we're going to put this in here. 
And just a quick explanation of what's happening here. We have the get frame metadata from the on-chain kit. This is really helpful for just getting our project started and getting the frame started. And it's going to create a button called begin. And it's going to have a image URL. And you can see here that it's going to be the gateway URL that we have, followed by the CID and the 0.png, which is the first file in that folder. Next, we're going to have a endpoint that is called the post URL. Inside of frames, whenever you click on something, the next thing it's going to do is send a post request to that URL. And you want to basically send information back to the frame with the new screen and etc. So in this case, we go ahead and do, we're going to have an API route called frame, and we're going to also have a query of ID equals one. And we're also going to add just some basic metadata here, and this is some information about it. So if we post this link somewhere else, we'll still get like a nice little open graph image of it. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and go to our layout.tsx, and we're just going to put in something a little bit simpler, nothing too crazy. All of our main stuff regards to our metadata is in our page file. And this is all we really need in these two full up files. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually go ahead and make that API route that I described earlier. So to do that, we're going to go into the app folder. I'm going to make a new folder called API, and we're going to make a new directory called frame. And inside of there, we're going to do a route.ts. So it should look something like that. Go ahead and go in here, and we're going to go ahead and paste this code in. And let me explain a little bit what's going on here, just so you're not too confused. What's happening here is we're basically creating a API endpoint inside of Next, and it's going to basically return a response. Uh, so if it gets a post request, it's going to take the request and then send something else in response. And in here, we're going to grab the search params. So you realize that we did the question mark ID equals one. That's what we're grabbing. We're going to grab the ID. And with that, we're going to turn it into a number and we can basically do like a next ID. And what that's going to do is allow us to kind of iterate through that folder really easily. So you can see here in this response here, this is the initial response. This is frame ID, right? The number one that we have. And these are the special Farcaster frame metadata tag properties. So we can see here we have the type of frame, and this is going to be V next. We have an image, which we're basically going to process that image we had earlier from the CID. We're also going to have the button. So button number one is going to do have the content of next page. And we're also going to have the post URL. And this is basically going to go to the next API route. And what's really cool with this is that we can essentially just use the next ID where we increment that ID query parameter and just kind of feed it into itself. But we're still basically feeding it new images, which is really cool. And finally, we're going to have, you know, a conditional statement here. If it equals seven, which is the very last image we have, we're going to basically have something different. We're going to have two buttons, button one, button two. And in button one, we're going to say visit cosmiccowboys.cloud. And that's going to be an action of post underscore redirect. And that's going to basically redirect the user to a new website. And we're also going to have another one for how to do this tutorial. We'll have a link to the blog post. By the way, if you want to follow along in a written format, blog post down below, check it out. Now, one last thing you'll see here that the post URL of our end is called API slash end. So let's go ahead and make that route now. We'll go into API, do end, and we'll do route.ts. There we go. Now, in this end.ts endpoint, uh, we're going to do something very similar where we're going to return some information based on a post request. And it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to take the data inbound. And something that's really cool about this whole Farcaster frame business is that whenever you're clicking on a button and it's sending a post request from Farcaster to your server, Farcaster is sending a payload of JSON that has information about the user and what buttons they clicked. And so what we're doing here is we're taking the data, we're parsing it, and we're saying data.untrustedData.buttonIndex is our button ID. And this is how we tell if they press button one or button two on that very last slide. Very helpful. And so we do a little bit of conditional logic based on whether they did a button ID one or button ID two, we're basically going to declare a path. And with this path, we're going to do a redirect and set the location of the headers as well. So we're taking our base URL, do it a next response dot redirect visual, and then we'll do a path. Now you realize that if we have, you know, home, which is just slash, and then Cosmic Cowboys, that's a page we haven't made yet. So let's go make that real quick. It's really simple. 
inside our app folder, what we'll have to do is just do a new folder called Cosmic Cowboys. And then inside there, we'll do a page.tsx. It'll do the same thing for Pinata Cloud. There we go. And inside of these, we don't really actually need anything, but just in case someone does happen to see the page, we're going to put something that says redirecting dot, dot, dot. They shouldn't actually see it because it's going to be much, much faster than that. So we'll just paste that in there. Let's do that for this one too. And you can see here, just a default page redirecting. It's all we need. Now you'll notice what we didn't do is in that redirect file, we didn't redirect them to an external URL. And that is because Farcaster requires that the redirect has to be the same host as what as your frame. So kind of an easy way around that is to basically redirect the person to a different page on your app and then have your app redirect them from that page to the external website. And we're going to do that inside of the next JS config. So we're going to go in here to next.config.mjs and we're just going to go ahead and paste in the following. So you can see here we have a function called async redirects with a return. And basically we'll say if the source is slash cosmic cowboys, we're going to shoot them to cosmic cowboys.cloud. If their source is pinata cloud, then we're going to send them to pinata.cloud slash blog and then the link to this blog post. Really cool. Now everything's up and running. What's really helpful and what you may want to do is spin up your local server and try hitting some of these endpoints. Do a post to your base URL localhost colon 3000, port 3000, slash API slash frame question mark ID equals one and just see what you get back. Make sure you're getting those header tags back. And once you have that up and running, you can basically take this project, upload it to Vercel, put in your env variables, and also just make sure to update your base URL because that's going to be based on the domain that you're given by Vercel. Now to actually test this frame, definitely go to warpcast.com and I'll have a link down below for a developer's portal that allows you to test frames. And it's really, really nice because we can basically paste in our link here, load it up, and it's going to give us what we're rendering right now, what the next frame is going to be. And it gives us all the metadata information that we put into our meta tags and gives us a green light if it's actually being loaded. So we can hit begin. Go to the next page, you can see it's updating everything here. We get to probably that last page, it's going to see we have Framecaster button one, Framecaster button two, and we can have up to four buttons, so it's really nice. And we'll just go ahead and make sure it's working, click on the link here. There we go. Well, that wraps it up for this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I always try to respond and get in touch with people. And we're really excited about frames. We want to see what you're building. If you've built a frame, go ahead and post it down below in the comments. We want to see that too. So until next time, happy pinning.